The Victorian Institute of Sport has welcomed home its Olympic and Paralympic heroes in a gala function at the Albert Park headquarters. Among the stars, the wheelchair basketballer Dylan Alcott, the wheelchair rugby gold medal guys Nazim Erdem and Jason Lees, water polo's bronze medalist Rowie Webster and the ageless silver medalist Drew Yi. Kicking off the festivities, singer Yo and Marie Harris. TV. My name's Dylan Orcott, a member of the Australian wheelchair basketball team, the Rollers, who are hot off the plane from London. And I'm joined with some of the Australian gliders, the women's wheelchair basketball team, who won a silver medal in London, did very well. Now I'm joined by Shelley. Shelley, how was the experience? Uh, it was the best games I've ever been to. It was amazing. Why was it the best? Uh, I think the crowds and uh, just being in a place where Australians are loved was, uh, you know, it was good. Now, Leanne, it was your first games. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was pretty good. Good? Is that, is that that's all you're giving me? Just pretty good? <laughs> Alright, it was amazing. Best thing I've ever done. And also joined by Kobe Crispin, who starred, starred over in London. Now, how do you compare it to Beijing? Um, it was very different to Beijing. Uh, personally, I was a bit older and it was a different experience. But, yeah, I think Beijing put on a good show, but London just blew it out of the water, I think. Uh, yeah, the, everybody in London really put on a good show for us. So. Now, also, your haircut's a bit different from Beijing. Do you want to <laughs> outline what your hair was like in Beijing? It was, it was still a nice haircut, it was just a little bit shorter. I sort of looked like a boy. <laughs> it was very like posh spice circa like 1999, very boy cut, but it's looking very nice these days. That's okay. <laughs> now I'm joined by Paralympic gold medal wheelchair rugby coach Brad Dubley. Brad, mate, how is it to be a gold medal coach? Mate, I've been around the sport for 17 years and to finally reach the pinnacle was unbelievable, mate. Uh, to have a team that we had up in uh, London was uh, just fantastic. I'm so proud of each and every one of them. And uh, you know yourself, Dil, uh, being gold medalist, I'm, it's just crazy. So now a lot of people don't know this, but you were actually like the stud of the wheelchair rugby team for the 10 years previous to this tournament. Want to elaborate on that at all? Well, that's back in the days when uh, you know they let anyone play. Uh, I, I heard you're a scary man on the court. Oh, skin and bones, mate, skin and bones, but now it's a whole different beast. Uh, you know, when you've got the likes of Riley and Bondi out there, it's a uh, whole new game. Now, there's obviously, obviously a bit of controversy. Both Bondi and Riley are on pretty good terms with themselves. Now, if you were to pick one player, who would you pick? I think I'd pick Riley. Uh, Bondi is going to be devastated with that. Yeah, but Riley, uh, Bondi's got like all the millions of fans out there, um, and that's enough for his ego, that's all he needs. Fair enough, thanks, mate. What she likes to call the face of the Paralympic team. <laughs> Kelly Cartwright, gold medalist in the long jump and silver medals in the 100 metres for amputee running. Kel, did you enjoy London? I did, it was the best experience of my life and I loved every minute of it. Now, you went to Beijing, how did it compare to your experience there? Uh, it was a whole different ball game for me. Going into Beijing, I wasn't even in the top three, but going into London, I was, and it was a massive atmosphere. I think London did a great job and I just felt like they got behind the games a lot more. Now. There's a bit of a rumour on the street that you may or may not have got some new ink since you've been home. Now, is that, do you want to share that with anyone? Or... Oh, well, you want me to share it with everybody? I mean, if you want to share it, like, it's up to you if you want it. Yeah, I did. I got this one here, and it says Gold 2012, and I really like it, so... You know what? I did see this girl work very hard at the gym, and she deserves all her success, so well done, Kel. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now I'm joined by with Sarah Tate and Kate Hornsey, silver medal in the women's pair at the rowing at the 2012 London Olympics. Guys, you enjoy the experience? It was awesome. We uh, we both went to Beijing as well. We were in the women's eight that came sixth. So to come home with a medal in London was an extremely different experience this time around. I'd imagine it felt a bit better winning silver than coming sixth. <laughs> it was quite a bit better. You get a bit more attention as well, I feel. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Now, one of my favourite things about the rowing, which I've got to ask, is when I was watching it on TV, that peloton that was riding along the side. Have you guys? Is everyone asking you about that or? Yeah, I've had quite a few questions about that. That's actually all the coaches following the racing and it is pretty hard because they have no helmets on, they're riding with one hand and they're watching the racing so they're not watching where they're going and there was a few stacks in the peloton. There was an actual stack? Oh, heaps. Heaps of stacks. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I saw that. I, t I, like, I enjoy the rowing but I was waiting for some kind of stack to happen but didn't really see it. Our coach admitted to us after our final that he didn't he didn't follow the last 500 metres of our race because he was too afraid he'd like get caught up in it and have a crash so he stopped with 500 metres to go and just watched on a big screen. So That's fair enough as well. Can you hear them yelling at you from where they're riding? 
You can early on in the race, but as it gets close to the end, the crowd is ridiculous and you can't, like Sarah couldn't even hear me speaking half the time. The crowds were nuts, weren't they? It was yeah. the, one of the best experiences yeah. playing in front of like 20,000 people every yeah, time. Yeah, we were the same, 25,000 I think, like from day one. They, they turned out for the heats right through. Yeah, it was great. Thanks ladies, enjoy your night. Uh, thanks, you too. I'm joined by Ian Cohen from uh, Channel 10 News. Now, Ian, you were over at the London Olympics. Yes, How did you enjoy it over there? Oh, fantastic, Dylan. Unbelievable experience. And any time, obviously, you've got that many of the world's elite athletes or Paralympians as well, it's just an enormous uh, occasion. So I loved it. Lived on about two or three hours sleep a night because you're living the Australia day to get live on TV and then obviously the England day to cover the events. Now, we put on a good show in Australia. I love our sporting events. But they really stepped it up to another level, didn't they? Yeah, look, they certainly did. The Poms were really, really good at what they do. I reckon the only thing they don't do, because they queue beautifully, that's almost like a national sport for the Poms, they're unbelievable. But they can't seem to organise the queue. Sometimes you're getting on the javelin or whatever, and the one queue going one way down an escalator, eventually they sort it out. But look, great games, outstanding games. You've got to give me, got to give me your top two highlights. One from the Paralympics, one from the Olympics. Uh, I reckon the top two highlights for me, seeing uh, Usain Bolt run uh, is certainly something else that's, that's unbelievable and the way he does it and the ease with which he does it um, is just phenomenal. I reckon at the Paralympics, uh, I mean Matthew Cowdery is just an exceptional talent isn't he? I mean really, just enormous and what's he up to now? 10, 11 gold medals? 13 I think 13, now. 13 is it? Yeah, I mean and just watching him go through his paces, absolutely unbelievable. Obviously you guys did really well too. Silver Silver is not as good as 13 golds, but hey, we're still happy. And I mean, winning that many, he swims about as fast as someone with two arms. It's ridiculous. It is amazing. It is, and the, the, what a lot of people don't understand, the same amount of fitness has got to go into it, same amount of practice, same amount of all those sort of things have to go into it to be that elite. So outstanding effort. Cheers, Anne. Thanks for being here, mate. No worries, Dylan. Cheers. VIS TV.